I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What's going on everybody, all my brothers, all my sisters around the world. I pray all is well with everybody. Now y'all see my title, Politics and Religion. As we thank the good Lord for so much on this blessed day, I want to have a little real talk video here for a moment because another thing that's destroying the church that we need to get rid of out of the church is politics. Now I know you got a great debate behind this because some people say, well, politics and religion, they go good together. They go hand in hand. We need that in the church. But if you're not studying this word and realizing what's going on, y'all, and see the downfall of politics being all in the church, let me bring out some truth in this video. You got preachers who are preaching more about politics than the word of God. You know most lawmakers are lawbreakers, y'all. And people are uh, pretty much, they profit so much off this mess. So when you look at religion and, and, and politics, then you study Revelation chapter 13. I guarantee you if you read Revelation chapter 13, you're going to see who's in, who's in charge, let me say in control, let me say, of politics and religion. It's all about Satan. All about Satan, y'all. When you look at religion and politics, you see both of them got a form of control, don't you? We just talked about the other day about Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit in the churches. And this is why I want to tie this in with, with, with politics. You know, because it's a crying shame how many churches are so messed up because of this, y'all. Real messed up. You know, so many pastors, y'all, I hate to say this, but not, thank God, not all pastors, but so many pastors, y'all, they won't even stand on the truth no more because of politics, this mess. And when you get to the point where this is not important no more, and you trying to fit in, come on, talk to us, Holy Ghost, you done messed up. You done messed up. Politics. Politician. Political preachers. I can't stand on the truth because I got to keep my salary. I don't want to lose my members. I can't preach on sin. We need that money to keep operating. Let me, let me say something, y'all. You wonder why you're not going to see these homosexuals get sat down in the music department and let me say this out top homosexuals JT love you I'm not condemning you I'm speaking on this because this is one of the, this is the music department now y'all that's musicians and minister of music y'all know what I'm talking about the homosexual music department is so big now and you know why these preachers allow that to go on because they're acting just like the world yes I can't get on here and teach you no lies, y'all. All sin in the church, people are, are going, are not trying to stand on it because of political views. That's why I'm not, I'm not bashing on homosexuals, but I want to use homose homosexuality because when you look at the world and see how big homosexuality is, and then you look inside of the church, okay, case closed, y'all. But they won't even sit them down in the church. Now, what, what do you get there with that, JT? I'm, I'm glad y'all asked me because I want to tie this in with politics and religion. Satan is loving it every, every second, every chance. All this sin, and then you see this stuff, and, and the question should come in your head, why is this mess not being put in check? Well, look at what's going on in the world now. We allow what? Same-sex marriages. We done took this and set it on fire. We allowed same-sex marriages. Why? We need they votes. Don't you know the preachers that allow this mess to go on? They need the homosexuals' paycheck. Get one in, then they bring all their buddies in. 
Next thing you know, you got gay churches set up everywhere. I got a, I got a gay church right down the street from me, walking distance. Rainbow flag out and everything, and ain't nobody saying nothing. We need that. Look like everybody dirty and crooked nowadays, but thank the Lord everybody is not dirty and crooked, and there's some churches that's operating, and they don't care nothing about politics. So you see why they go hand in hand with each other. Politics and religion. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all already know me. I don't care two cents about who wins some election. It's just me. I'm, I'm just talking for myself now. Because my trust is not in the government. This is me right here. See, it's about to get real crazy out here for Christians. Some of y'all will catch that. Some of y'all want to escape route. But see, if you really been watching the news and keeping up with everything, it's about your faith is about to get tested harder than it's ever been tested before. What if you go to the store tonight and your credit card don't work and you know you got money? Your bank account. Ain't nothing working. What if you go to the gas pump and the, and the, the gas and they tell you you can't get no gas here? It don't matter what station you go to, you can't get no gas here. What if your electricity just go off? See, these are things that nobody want to talk about while we sit up here talking about politics. You better be talking about a revelation. You better be talking about Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. You better get in the book. Some of us don't want to get off Facebook. Spend more time on Facebook than in the book. It's real out here, y'all. It's real. That's why I don't cut in about who wins no election. I'm following the most high. Hell with who get voted in the office. Ain't nobody doing nothing right, Harley. I keep telling people, you better look at what the government done to our Savior. Had the government shut down not too long ago. Oh, most Christians that I know lost their mind because the government had a shutdown. Go to show you right there how many people that lost focus on the Lord. Look at what the government done. Oh, teach us, Holy Ghost. Jesus had to stand against the government while so many of us are putting our trust in the government. Jesus stood bold and he stood well and had to let them know, this ain't my kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus is bringing his kingdom, the new Jerusalem, that new holy city after the old heaven passes away. That's what we should be looking forward to, but we look into the government, y'all. He stood bold. And the sad thing is, religion has already kept us so divided up, y'all. But now we got politics tied in with religion. And y'all wonder why JT don't care nothing for religion. Because my Savior did. He wasn't interested in religion, and I'm not either. Jesus warned us, Yahshua warned us that these things was going to happen. And according to the word, it's there. Matter of fact, let me say this again. Study Revelation 13. It talks about the two beasts. And you know what you know what them two beasts are? One of them is political and one of them is religious. Come on, y'all. Can't y'all see how this... I know a lot of y'all can see it. The, the setup that's already here. I wonder how many people calling themselves Christians, Christ-like, is ready to take on some of this persecution that's coming. Overseas, they're already taking it on. While we over here playing church, they're over there dying just to have church. Some of y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. How many Christians ready to fall on some, some hard times? Religion and politics. God, the Most High, did not start up religion. That's why I said Jesus wasn't interested in religion. He was. He, he wanted that heart. Politics all in the church, y'all. Politics and church leadership today is just abusing folks. Preaching, when you preach, you're supposed to be preaching a humble and holy task. That's what you're doing. Preach the word. He didn't say the gospel of politics must be preached. 
He said this gospel must be preached. When you look at these preachers in the pulpit that do this, love politics more than the word, look at how they church operate. You know one thing about politicians, y'all? They love to lie and tell you anything. Why is it a preacher look just like a politician? A preacher's true message, preaching this, should convict you. I didn't say condemn you and put you in the hell and go off on you. No, but it should convict you to where you want to straighten up your life. But we got too many politician preachers now. Preachers who become politicians. Those are the ones whose churches are operating just like the Laodiceans church in Revelation, the last church that, that, that the Bible spoke about. Lukewarm. Lukewarm faith. Neither hot or cold. That means anything goes on in your church. We put anybody in position now. Let that man be the pastor over that church. I know he don't really know how to preach, but he can sing. Good God Almighty, what we living in, y'all? I remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, he said, measure candidates by the continent of their character. The content of their character, I mean. Measure candidates by the content of their character. And when you look inside the church and look at the world, what difference do you really see? Now we got these pimp preachers, y'all, tied in with politician preachers. Only time I see preachers come together is at a funeral. That's about it. Or, or uh, a pastor's appreciation. Why? Because it's time to collect money. I'm not saying all preachers are bad, y'all, but we got some messed up preachers out here who ain't trying to repent. The government can't save you. The government cannot save you. You know why so many Christians are running scared right now? Not all. Because they have been dependent on the government so long that they have slipped away from this. The apostles commanded the first century Christians as well as today to proclaim the gospel and live lives that give clear evidence to the gospel's transforming power. This is why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto us. We don't even want to seek the kingdom. We want to seek the government. And you know what one of Satan's greatest deceptions was also? Is that we can rest our hope for cultural morality and godly living in politicians and government officials. Let me say this, folks. We're going we're gonna to wrap this video up. A nation's hope for a change is not to be found in any country's ruling class, y'all. The church have messed up and made a terrible mistake if the church think that it's the job of the politicians to defend, to advance, and to guard biblical truths and Christian values. Nowadays, the Constitution is more important than the Bible. But in the court, what, what's the first thing they want you to do? Swear on the Bible. Good God Almighty. I always say to hell with the government because that's what's going to go down with it anyway, y'all. I know how the government done me when I got laid off. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't put no trust in man no way. I know what man going to do. Fall. Nowhere in this word right here. Oh, I love it. Nowhere in this Bible did it tell us to spend all our time and energy and money in governmental affairs. Our mission, y'all, lies 
not in changing the nation through political reform, but in changing hearts through the word of God. This is why I walk by faith and not by sight. I was trying to close, but the Lord just laid this in my spirit. We are always talking about how we need to come together when things happen. Oh, we need to go march because this done happen. Another terrible thing that happened. We need to we need to come together. We need to pray. We want to call certain important people because maybe they can help us. I remember back in the day, oh, we better call the Black Panthers. Get the Black Panthers on the phone. I ain't got nothing against the Black Panthers. But black people, we've been fighting and killing and murdering each other for so long. And we want to talk about black power. Where the power at? You know what I'm talking about? Holy Ghost power. Ooh, I failed to fire. Holy Ghost power. We can't even get brothers on the same street to get along. And we talking about getting together. I don't have nothing against you. We want to call Al Sharpton every time something happens. I don't have nothing against Al Sharpton. We better get Bishop T.D. Jakes on the phone. We better get some big time people in. I don't, I don't have nothing against nobody. None of them. But you better get the Lord. That's what you better get. Take a stand with this right here, y'all. I'll close with that. Let the church say amen. May the Lord bless you.